Hi, I'm Jacob Cebulski. Welcome to Rapid Miner Data Mining and Data Visualization. So we need to change something. Uh, the problem here is that we simply use the same data for training the model, or building the model, and then testing the model. Uh, what we need to do is something different. We should split some of those examples that we use for uh, sorry, all the examples into examples for training and different set of examples for model testing or validation. Okay, we'll do that. There is an operator called split. Split the data. I'm going to use it instead of multiply. So I'm going to delete multiply. It's not good for me. I'm going to split all of the data into two parts. Let's use 70% of data, 0.7, for training. And let's use a smaller part for validation. Now, mind you, I'm just testing if the model is correct or not. Uh, what I showed you before, I could build a model and apply it straight away to new data. What I don't know is what is the performance of that model or likely performance, how many times it's going to make a mistake. So I'm going to make this assessment. So normally I would not be using only 70% of data to build a model, I would be using all data to build a model. But since I'm you now doing model validation, I split the data. So I'm using only 70% to build it and I'll use 30% to test it. So 70% of data will travel this way to KNN, the model will be created, and then 30% of data will be used for labeling. Now that 30% of data, we know exactly how it was classified. And so we could use this information to, uh, to check one against the other. Let's run it. Here's the example. We can see uh, the prediction versus the truth. That's the prediction, that's the truth. The confidence voting, that's the performance. Uh, as you can see, we have much worse result. The accuracy is lower. Um, it's lower because um, it's a new data. So before we were really dealing not with checking the model performance, but checking whether it's able to remember what all the data it used for training. And the kappa should be much, much lower as well. Okay, it is much lower. So we're not as successful as we thought we were, um, but maybe we could improve that model somehow. Um, how can we improve it? In many different ways. But first, let's save it. This is the validation test the validation of the model. So let's say the process, the model, whoop, uh, it's validation, I use incorrect version number. I can always go and um, rename it. So I did prediction training validation. Right, so um, we'll do that next. We'll be looking at ways of improving it. But before that, we'll do a bit of experimentation. Um, the question is, maybe simply we're not lucky when the data was split for training and validation. Maybe we were very lucky. Okay, so let's look at that. Um, at the moment, the, the data is split completely randomly. Okay, let's uh, think how it was split. First of all, I want to make sure that we use stratified sampling. What's stratified sampling? It means that when you split the data, we we're not really sure if uh, the balance of um, my labeled values were split equally between training 
and uh, between validation data set. So perhaps if there was randomly all data for training was missing um, the case of subrogation, uh, maybe when we actually apply it later it will not uh, be able to predict it. So let's first ensure that stratified sampling is used. That means the the training set and the validation set will have a similar proportion of uh, zeros and ones uh, in the subrogation field as in the original data set. So that's the first thing. Just make sure we do the right thing. Performance. Oh, it actually improved. Uh, so clearly uh, we were not lucky before. Uh, now it's 72 percent accuracy and obviously the kappa will go up as well. Yep, slightly. Um, that's better. So before automatic split, it used so called shuffling. Shuffling is simply random allocation of observations for model building and model testing. So we've done the right thing. But where we're lucky again, um, let's look at that. Um, we don't know how lucky we were. And before we was shuffling, I was. Oh, sorry, we will stratify it. We use advanced parameters. We were going to initiate a random split. So if you wanted to replicate exactly my results, you can build that model. You could use the same data set, but each time you run, it will have a different result. Um, let's assume that the random split starts with some uh, specific uh, starting point and we all end up with exactly the same split and this is controlled by so-called random seed uh, if you give it a number let's say 2017 that means when we run it and you run it with the same number we'll get exactly the same outcome 72.34 percent accuracy what if we pick a very different number let's make it one we run it, 71% accuracy. Uh, could it be that we put something ridiculous like this, we'll get a much worse result. It's 70. In fact, it is quite likely that we could pick some random uh, starting point and we get appalling result. And that's because we rely on luck. Um, now we're lucky here in a sense that um, uh, the whole data set has over 3,000 observations. So um, sampling from 3,000 uh, observations, um, we use random process and the differences should not be huge. But if you had a data set of 100 to 100, the accuracy would range dramatically. And uh, for that, to do it properly, you need something called cross-validation. We'll do it next.